Good evening, I'm Paul Fraser and this is the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain Television. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received at Gudabia Palace today the Thai Ambassador to Bahrain, Chaya Pan Bam Rang Fong, Charge d'Affaires of the Philippines Embassy, Maria Baz Cortes, and Charge d'Affaires of the Indian Embassy, Mira Sisodia. His Royal Highness highlighted their role in consolidating joint relations and reviewed the situation of their communities working and residing in Bahrain so as to ensure their rights in line with national laws and international conventions. The Prime Minister commended the role of these communities and their contributions in the development projects of the Kingdom in various fields. He expressed satisfaction with the course of relations between Bahrain and these countries, asserting the Kingdom's keen interest to further enhance them to serve mutual interests. He highlighted that Thailand, the Philippines and India are influential in the world economy and trade, which increased the importance of strengthening joint cooperation. The diplomats thanked Bahrain and its government, led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, for their support and backing for their country's residents and workers in Bahrain highlighting the facilities they're provided with by both state ministries and institutions. They confirmed the flexibility of Bahrain's labour market and human rights law, to which takes into account the number and diversity of foreign workers. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, was presented a letter from the Thai Prime Minister, Prayat chan -cha, that includes an official invitation to visit Thailand. The letter was presented at his Royal to His Royal Highness at Gurubia Palace by the Thai Ambassador to Bahrain, Chaya Pan Bamrang Fong. The Prime Minister asked the Ambassador to convey his thanks to his Thai counterpart and his thanks on the invitation, wishing Thailand and his people further progress and prosperity. His Royal Highness commended ongoing developments in bilateral relations and joint cooperation in all fields, which reflects the two countries' interest to further boost coordination in service of both countries' interests. For his part, the Ambassador expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness for his efforts to strengthen bilateral relations, which led to signing numerous agreements and forming several joint committees with the aim of further consolidating joint cooperation in all fields. Under Secretary of Housing Ministry Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa announced today the beginning of distributing benefits certificates for the Tubli housing project in line with the set time frame given to implement the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince to distribute 3,000 residential units. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed asserted that Tubli housing project is one of the major projects listed on the Ministry's action plan to build 25,000 units of social housing as part of the Royal Directive to build 40,000 units. He added that the distribution process is going according to schedule, saying that the Ministry has been able to finalise the distribution procedures of more than 1,000 units in housing projects in Sanad, East Rafah, West Rafah, Alozi, Busetin, Nabi Saleh, Demistan and Tubli. To accurately and fairly highlight Islam's teachings of peace as a doctrine that promotes harmony, tolerance and moderation, the Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum Award for World Peace was established by Decree 19 of 2011. 
The aspiration of the award is to build bridges of cooperation between diverse cultures, thereby fortifying international relations. Today, Vice Chairman of the Awards Board of Trustees, Sultan al Mahdi, made a presentation at the International Peace Institute, Middle East and North Africa, to advocate reading for peace. The meeting is also building on a UAE initiative aimed at an integrated national literacy strategy and a framework to produce a reading generation and the UAE's efforts to turn into a hub of culture and knowledge with content for a new generation of scientists, intellectuals and innovators. Amari affirmed the award endeavours to recognise individuals and organisations that make outstanding contributions to peace and humanitarian pursuits as nominees are evaluated according to world-class standards to ensure credibility and motivate higher accomplishments. On the night of the 15th of July, Turkey faced an attempted coup by the Fethullah Gulen terrorist organization. In an interview with Bahrain Television, the Turkish ambassador to Bahrain, Hatun Demara, highlighted her country's procedures to deal with the situation. It's more than 10 days uh, that this unfortunate event took place in Turkey. From the first uh, moment on, Turkish government never lost the control of the country. And it came out that it, this uh, Fethullah Gülen terrorist organization infiltrated into the state mechanism so deeply that uh, it was a planned, organized and uh, the, 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 the realized operation of this uh, group. Uh, whatever we faced on that unfortunate night. Um, now my government is uh, trying uh, to find all the culprits and to prosecute them under the rule of law, uh, laws and regulations uh, which is in force in our country. On this occasion, I would like to take again the opportunity to, to thank uh, His Majesty King Hamad, uh, the Bahraini government and the Bahraini people for their solidarity, sincere solidarity. Because uh, the, the Bahrain was one of the first countries standing by Turkey and my nation, and it, it will never be forgotten. Uh, the, the, no country except this kind of terrorist uh, attack, uh, terrorist infiltration into its system. And now we are fighting against it, and we uh, ask our friends, brotherly countries, to stand by us uh, in our And fight. now it's time for all the latest business news. It's across to Barra. Thank you, Paul. Good evening and welcome to Business News on Bahrain TV. The Industrial Sector Committee of the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the BCCI, in cooperation with the PricewaterhouseCoopers Bahrain PwC, today held a seminar informing stakeholders about the value-added tax, VAT, which the GCC states have agreed to implement on January 1, 2018. The seminar covered the aspects of the VAT, the VAT compliance and documentation requirements, implementation consideration and possible industry-specific variation and focused on the tangible ways that small and medium enterprises can prepare for its implementation. To raise the uh, awareness about this upcoming VAT uh, uh, issue in uh, the region, it's been uh, implemented in a major part of this uh, world. Uh, Bahrain, one of the uh, countries, are being affected by drop of oil rate and seriously they are now thinking to implement such thing. My concern as board of director for Bahrain Chamber of Commerce, the implementation has to be uh, uh, made in parallel with the other GCC country in order to avoid that we will be costly more than others in regard of selling the goods. We are very competitive in regard of genuine goods in Bahrain. The rates are uh, very competitive. The Electricity and Water Authority, in conjunction with the Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority, today launched a conservation campaign aimed at reducing electricity and water usage among the five-star hotels in Bahrain's hospitality sector. Danielle Topardo brings us more in this report. The Electricity and Water Conservation Campaign for Hotels, 
driven by the Electricity and Water Conservation Directorate with the backing of IWA and the BTEA, is an important initiative for preserving natural resources, launched during the hottest time of year when electricity and water usage is at its peak. We are inviting the, the uh, five-star hotels, there are 16 uh, hotels of them, and the idea is to start a campaign starting from now up to September. So the theme is for them to reduce consumption, electricity and water, or water, whatever they choose, uh, or both, of course, to, to reduce it by 3%. So at the end of the period, there will be some measures taken and to see how much, you know, are being reduced. The campaign involves promoting awareness, motivating and training staff, and detecting areas where repairs and a change of devices can help with conservation efforts. The hospitality sector is one of the most electricity and water intensive industries in the kingdom. If participants can achieve a 3% reduction in consumption, they will save to sustain not only precious resources, but also costs, which is an appealing incentive in the face of declining subsidies. Of course, hospitality is always very high consumption because you cannot control your guests. You know, they are luxury hotels, there are pools, people tend to waste water, you know, there are gems, showers, you know, we'll try to educate the staff and hopefully also to educate the, the guests in the, the hotel. But mainly the management and the staff should be, will be educated and will be available to help in this field. Hotels that achieve the 3% reduction target will be rewarded, and it is hoped that any successes of the first year can be replicated with the expansion of the conservation campaign to three- and four-star establishments. Reporting for Bahrain Television, I'm Daniel Deporto. The Bahrain Shares Index closed today at 1,157.69 points, a decrease of 2.20 points below yesterday's closing. The fall was in the investment and invest services sector. Investors traded mainly in the services sector, representing 41% of the total value of shares traded. Results indicated that 34 equity transactions took place with a volume of 1,154,136 shares, worth a total value of 340,432 Bahraini dinars.